Uh, growth hormone secreting tumors are one of a subset of tumors that come from the pituitary gland that makes something that actively affects the body. They're called functional tumors. First, it's important to know that pituitary tumors are quite common. At least 10% of us have a pituitary tumor, and most of these are non-functioning. However, in the minority which are producing some sort of a pituitary hormone, one-third of those may produce growth hormone. Symptoms of uh, growth hormone hypersecretion result from the fact that growth hormone stimulates IGF-1 production from the liver, which is insulin-like growth factor 1 hormone. And then, in turn, IGF-1 goes to all the tissues in our body and lead to a syndrome which we call acromegaly. Now, acromegaly is many times missed because the changes of this growth hormone hypersecretion of acromegaly are extremely slow and progressive and very mild. So much so that even family members and, and uh, a person himself or herself would miss acromegaly for 10, 15 years or longer. What is acromegaly? Acromegaly is a syndrome characterized by soft tissue growth and swelling and by metabolic changes. So patients would develop um, increase like coarse features of their face, increase uh, in um, or puffiness of their uh, arms and legs. They would complain of maybe increased sweating, increased um, uh, skin changes, such as uh, um, Neve or other skin lesions. Then people may have diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia. Um, it's frequent for us to hear that a, a person would need to change their ring size because of the uh, enlargement of the soft tissues and the enlargement of the bone of formation of what we call osteophytes, bony growth. Um, the shoe size change is another frequent um, uh, complaint. And uh, also, if um, uh, a person would have a good dentist, a good observant dentist, uh, tooth spacing is another very common complaint in acromegaly. Um, we are uh, lucky to diagnose acromegaly very early in stages, whenever someone would be incidentally discovered with a pituitary tumor. And in that situation, we would look for hormonal hypersecretion even without symptoms. And if we would find IGF-1 being high, we would probably proceed with further workup, confirm early diagnosis of acromegaly, and possibly cure uh, the person before acromegaly fully develops. But unfortunately, it does not happen frequently enough. Someone should seek care when the tumor is identified as a cause. And uh, because it's an, a functionally active tumor or it's putting out something that may hurt you long term, it's important to seek care at the time of recognition. While it's not an emergency and urgency to get treated, it's an, important at some point in time to get treatment that will bring those growth hormone levels down and consequently the other hormone down, IGF-1, so that your body can function normally. And that'll help prolong your life because the goal of treatment is to not have this tumor shorten your life. The treatment of choice uh, is a curative treatment by surgery. So if the surgery is possible and uh, complete, that re may result in long-standing or permanent cure from acromegaly. We do have uh, other treatment options, including medical therapy, uh, as well as uh, radiation therapy, such as gamma knife therapy. And quite a few patients may need uh, one or all three of these therapies to achieve complete cure from acromegaly. I think one of Mayo's biggest advantages is its ability to collaborate and work across fields. And I think that's very important for this type of tumor. It's also important that there's endocrinologists that have seen this disease and work with it, and uh, our, our, our endocrinologists are very experienced with it. It's also important that the surgeons that are treating it are capable of doing more than just a pituitary surgery because a lot of times there's other uh, potential procedures that are necessary for it. And then to offer the gamut of, of options for radiation. So very commonly they can be treated with just single session radiation called stereotactic radiosurgery. But in someone that's younger with this tumor and, and potentially larger tumor, proton beam therapy, which is something that's offered here as well, all these all these different types of therapies are, are, are offered under one, uh, one roof. And what's really nice is we can sit down together and talk about what's the best for the patient.